So here's a question. How much better is the M1 Pro system on a chip compared to the M1 that Apple has been shipping for the past year? They're very similar in many ways, it seems. And I wanted to know, is it worth spending the extra five, six, seven hundred dollars to upgrade from the MacBook Air or the MacBook Pro 13 inch model up to the 14 inch model that just came out? Is there a reason to do that? Or do you only get benefits from the M1 Pro and M1 Max processors if you start to spend extra money to upgrade them? So that's what we're gonna look at today. So obviously there's gonna be physical differences, other features that are different between these computers, but I'm really only focused on performance today, just so it's not a super long video. Let's take a look at some benchmarks, some real world benchmarks as to how much faster I was able to see this new M1 Pro is compared to the M1. Okay, so let's just visualize the difference between these processors right now, because the GPU and CPU cores are effectively the same power, so it's really a matter of how many of each you get. So on the M1 side, it's an eight core CPU and a seven or eight core GPU, depending on the model of air you get. And so the CPUs of those eight, four are high performance and four are more efficiency cores. So they don't run as fast, but they're used for a lot of lower end tasks. On the M1 Pro, you still get eight CPU cores, but six of them are high performance and two are efficiency. And on the GPU side, you're going all the way up to 14 cores of GPU. So GPU bound tasks are gonna be much faster on the Pro, but in terms of CPU, we'll see what the difference is. So that's really all I wanna talk about in terms of specs. Let's get into the actual numbers. Okay, so first things first, I have to import all of my stuff into the computer and I'm using the built-in SD slot reader. Uh, in this case, it was ever so slightly faster to do it on the built-in reader on the uh, MacBook Pro, on the new one, but it's really a matter of the card not being fast enough to take advantage of the full speeds, so there's really no difference there for me. Then in terms of actually working in these apps, I'm thinking Final Cut Pro, DaVinci Resolve, ScreenFlow, Sketch, obviously web browsers. In those cases, a lot of things felt basically the same, mostly because the M1 is still super fast at those and I feel no slowdown at all. But in some of the higher end stuff, I do feel some of the speed improvements, especially when saving really large files. ScreenFlow is a good example of this where you drag in a 12 gigabyte video file that drags in instantly in the new Pro, whereas it took a little bit more time to do on the Air for me. So that was a really nice, uh, that's more SSD than system on a chip, but maybe that's the same thing now. It's kind of weird to talk about this. But in general, I'd say in day-to-day -day use, it was a little faster in the Pro, but for my workflows of editing video and stuff, it wasn't a huge difference moment to moment. Now, exporting is where things got a little more interesting, and so here's some numbers for those. When I exported a bunch of files from Sketch, I exported 100 thumbnails actually from this channel that I've made, it was 30% faster on the new Pro, so that was great to see. When it came to Lightroom exports, I exported 55 raw images uh, taken on my Canon EOS RP. That was 28% faster on the M1 Pro. And then when it came to rendering video, ScreenFlow was about 7% faster than the old M1, and DaVinci Resolve was 8% faster. And then we get to Final Cut Pro, which really is confusing me. Um, in general, it's what you'd expect. When you're working in the app, it's quicker. When you are rendering out uh, kind of the preview footage you get in the timeline so you can edit things more effectively, uh, that's about a third faster, so about 33% faster. That's all great. And then when I'm exporting uh, as ProRes, which is the thing Apple is advertising because there's dedicated ProRes hardware on the M1 Pro that's not in the M1, that's about twice as fast, and that's fantastic. Where things get weird is when I exported that same 21 minute project as H.264, which is what I actually use and what, it's what I upload to YouTube and everything, that was three times slower on the new MacBook Pro. So the M1 Pro, which is better in basically every way, uh, except for efficiency cores, but I can't imagine that's the difference, it's three times slower exporting my Canon footage. So I had no idea what that was all about. I couldn't figure it out. And so I tried some different projects. I was able to replicate it in different projects with different Canon video files. And then I changed it again and tried with iPhone footage. So let's try a whole new project with iPhone footage this time. In that case, it was very similar to what we saw in DaVinci and ScreenFlow where it was a couple percent faster. So I have no idea what's going on with Final Cut there. That's really an anomaly. And I'm sure there's some weird thing somewhere that I can address hopefully and fix this. Uh, and I'll see results that are more like what uh, the other thing showed, but yeah. Basically, where are we at right now? So I would say the performance on the M1 Pro, the baseline Pro, not the higher end ones, obviously those are gonna have tons of advantages. The baseline one is slightly better. In day-to-day -day usage, in normal tasks, like using a web browser, doing video calls, um, you know, all that kind of like basic stuff you do, it doesn't really feel any different to me. The M1 is already fantastic, so no slowdown versus no slowdown. 
it's great. <laughs> but when you get to these higher end tasks, uh, you do tend to see like five to 10% improvements for basically everything. And then some things I was seeing as much as 30% to 50% improvements on some things like some ProRes video exports, Sketch was a lot faster, um, Lightroom was a lot faster. So these things are definitely performance improvements, but in general, it feels a little faster, but it doesn't feel like it's revolutionized everything for me. So I guess take that as you will. In my opinion, if you're debating between the MacBook Air, which at the spec that I'm comparing it to is $1,400 versus the $2,000 uh, MacBook Pro, the 14 inch, I would say personally, the speed performance difference isn't massive and you may wanna lean towards the Air. But then again, we didn't talk about all the physical differences with the ports, the screen. The screen is really good on this laptop. I'm actually super, super impressed with it. Uh, the improved SSD performance, the better webcam. Like there's a lot of things here to like about the MacBook Pro as well. So there's more than just speed going into this conversation, but I wanted to do some of those benchmarks to give you an idea about the performance specifically. So that's it for today. If you found this video helpful, I'd love it if you hit the like button down there and I'll see you here next time. Bye-bye.